Congresswoman Emerson has enjoyed a 25 to 1 fundraising advantage over her last 14 years of, of opponents. And I'll tell you how she gets that advantage. About two weeks ago at a lobbyist shop in Washington, D.C., Congresswoman Emerson invited lobbyists and charged them $1,000 a plate, and she served them pork. I can't even make that up, folks. And it was with, this, with this comes a, a problem. She's received about $900,000 from Wall Street and big bank interests, and that money doesn't come for free. In return, she gave them the $700 billion Wall Street bailout. Now, that is a very good return on the investment. How do we solve this problem? Term limits. Right now, we've got the oldest and longest serving Congress in the history of the Republic. And, you know, I, I see it every day. I'm out there wearing through my boots, out there meeting voters, and taking on this is absolutely tough. And I knew that before I even started on this. But Congresswoman Emerson campaigned on term limits back in 1996. And I don't know if she forgot that pledge or if she's comfortable. But I think what happens is you get to D.C., you make too many compromises with too many people, and you forget who you represent. It's why I believe in term limits. And I, I do agree, though, with uh, Congresswoman Emerson on I am opposed to Citizens United ruling that flows tons more money into the system. If you want government of, by, and for the people, I'd be honored for your vote. If you want it of, by, and for the lobby, you're going to have to look elsewhere. Thank you. Mr. Van Dieven. I, too, would like to thank Mineral Area College for having me here, allowing me to participate, uh, tonight's panelists, the moderators, and the audience for attending. To answer the question, I believe that the recent U.S. Supreme Court ruling in Citizens United that overturned parts of McCain-Feingold was correct. Corporations, unions, PACs should all enjoy the same right to free speech that individuals enjoy. <coughs> Excuse me. Saying that, all campaign finance should be limitless, but also very transparent. I also believe that our elector electoral process is completely antiquated. The U.S. and Great Britain are the only two societies in Western civilization that still use a plurality voting system, which is one man, one vote. This results in disenfranchisement and the dreaded voting for the lesser of the two evils that we always hear about. And sometimes, which may be the case in this election, sometimes the uh, winners don't receive the majority of the votes. There are many alternative voting systems that, we can be, that can be used, such as instant runoff voting, which would eliminate primaries, and approved voting, where voters may cast more than one vote for no, numerous candidates. I believe that we are also seriously underrepresented. I believe that it is physically impossible for one person to represent a district the size of the Missouri 8th Congressional. And if elected, I would focus my efforts on alternative voting systems as opposed to term limits, which would require a constitutional amendment. And I would also focus my efforts on adequate representation as opposed to draconian campaign finance laws, which usurp individuals' freedom of speech and prevent people like me from uh, seeking public office. I agree with Mr. Bill that the, uh, the FEC regulations are very cumbersome. And I think that these laws are in place to prevent people like me from running for office as opposed to preventing corruption in elections. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Beal, second question. With the concern over the health care policy recently supported by the Obama administration and passed by Congress, would you favor the American public receiving the same level of health care coverage that is provided to members of Congress? I think probably it should go the other way around. Uh, congressmen should get the level of coverage that is provided to the rest of the population. Uh, it would be nice if we could, uh, in Congress, set the example. Uh, they rarely do that. They exclude themselves from laws. I know when the health care bill was, lo was uh, written, uh, I think it was the chief of staff and the actual congressman was going to have to go with the uh, Obama plan, but everybody else on the staff that actually wrote the paperwork somehow got themselves exempted. Uh, that's totally unacceptable. Now, my own opinion on Obamacare is that we need to repeal it and start over. I was very disappointed with the way uh, Obamacare was handled in the Congress. 
they spent a very long time whenever I think at that time the priority should have been on working on the economy, simplifying the ability to hire people, uh, opening up markets and those kind of things, and instead they focused on the health care bill. The health care bill is uh, way too cumbersome. It's difficult to understand. It's providing a whole bunch of uncertainty out there, and we're already seeing that big companies are asking for waivers that little companies don't have the technicians or the lawyers to do with. And that's the reason I think that we need to eliminate it and start over again. It's not that there wasn't a problem. It's just that they could have approached it in different stages. <coughs> For example, they could have expanded the health savings account allowance on tax returns so that there would be actual supply and demand uh, features f figured into the way people bought health care with their own money. They didn't need the 1099 requirement. They didn't need the fact that we had to add all these IRS auditors. I think the auditing should have been done on fraud and Medicare. Those are the things that I think we could be focusing on in health care. And when I get into Congress, it's my intention to re repeal Obamacare and then go ahead and start doing things in small segments. Small corrections, see if they work. If they work, then go to the next step. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Sowers? Lee, can you repeat that question? Yes. With the concern over the health care policy recently supported by the Obama administration and passed by Congress, would you favor the American public receiving the same level of health care coverage that is provided to members of Congress? Well, in the military, I learned how to lead. And you start by leading by example. And I think we're, we're tired of these double standards. I support a 28th Amendment that said Congress shall pass no law that does not apply to them. But until we get through that burdensome process, I get my current health care through the VA system. It's imperfect, but I think if it's good enough for a veteran, it's good enough for a member of Congress. That's why I'll stay on VA health care when elected. But looking broadly at uh, the health care reform that was passed, it's clear that the final bill was too big, too expensive, and too complex. And it absolutely needs to get fixed. And I'm sure tonight Congresswoman Emerson is going to list off a number of things that she doesn't like about uh, the bill. I agree with, with many of those. The question is, who is going to be best placed to fix and repeal portions of the bill? Congresswoman Emerson is a former lobbyist who's taken tens of thousands of dollars from health insurance and health care companies. I think we can all agree that having the health insurance companies continue to stand between patients and doctors and deny care when people get sick, that's one of the things that was fixed. Uh, drop people uh, from coverage. Continue to raise rates exorbitantly year over year. That these are things that can and should be addressed. I've approached this campaign differently. I've gone out on the ground on, as part of our boots on the ground and I've spent a lot of time talking and listening to voters. And I've heard their stories. I know that the number one cause for bankruptcy in the 8th Congressional District prior to any reform were health-related costs. I met a woman named Jenny who gave her child a kidney and then was dropped from her health care coverage because now she had a pre-existing condition. I met a hospital administrator who, prior to any reform, because of rising costs, would have uh, not been able to offer coverage to his own employees. And unlike Congresswoman Emerson, I don't think all the good ideas just come from one side of the aisle. I oppose the individual mandate, and I believe that insurance should be able to purchase across uh, state boundaries. So the question for us here tonight is who is best placed to fix this? Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Van Dieven. Well, I don't know what kind of uh, benefits that Congress gets. I've heard rumors. Um, I do know that several members of Congress that supported the health care bill, bragged that they would take the same health care that they passed. I don't know if this has happened. I do know that a lot of Democrats that supported the bill the last time around in Congress did so more for a photo opportunity as a, uh, instead of approaching as an opportunity to make health care more affordable and available. And this was a missed opportunity. Um, there are a lot of free market solutions that we can use to take care of the health care problem. I do believe that the new health care law needs to be repealed. This is going to have to happen on the state level. I don't think that Congress will have 
the courage to do this. It's going to have to come through nullification. I would like to repeal the HMO Act of 1973. This is the act that takes the decision-making process away from the doctor and the patient and puts it in the hands of a third-party bureaucracy. I would also like to see the insurance industry deregulated to allow competition across state lines. We need to dissolve the AMA's monopoly on medical licensing and allow competition there. Replace the FDA with a more agile free market alternative and make prescription drugs more affordable by making more prescription drugs available over the counter. And finally, I would like to allow individuals to invest into medical savings accounts that would be 100% tax-free and limitless. I don't think that there's anything compassionate about our, our health care system. We need to realize that health care is never going to be free and there's never going to be enough. And in a free society, there would be no government in health care. Thank you. Thank you. Congresswoman Emerson. Thank you. Uh, to answer the question, number one, uh, in the newly enacted health care law, members of Congress, with the exception of the Speaker of the House and the leadership, will be part of all of the health exchanges that have been created as a result of this new health care law. Uh, currently, members of Congress get the same uh, choices that other federal employees get, and you pay 70% um, um, is paid for, 30% is personally paid for. Uh, I happen to have the lowest Blue Cross Blue Shield, and it's five or six hundred dollars a month for me. And my husband uh, is also uh, part of the VA system. Let me speak about the health care bill, if I may, or the health care law, excuse me. The health care law that not only cuts five hundred billion dollars from Medicare, and we have in our congressional district the largest number of seniors of all nine congressional districts. It will impact them worse than anyone else. Our rural hospitals are going to uh, be hurting. Home health care, our nursing homes, their reimbursements will be decreased, but yet it costs 25 percent, yet we get 25 uh, percent less on our reimbursements for the same care that somebody in St. Louis gets. There's also a $500 billion tax increase. Larry mentioned uh, that small businesses will have to pay uh, or send 1099 forms for every $600 they spend with anyone. Mr. Sowers has back early on said that this health care law would be good for the 8th district. He then said he would have voted for it a separate time, voted for it before the not, no public funding for abortion language was in it and has said on numerous occasions, well, I, you know, I'm not for the individual mandate, but in Congress, a bill is a bill. You can't be against part of it and not vote for the whole thing. Uh, it will hurt this district. It will hurt every person here because you will be forced by the government to purchase insurance or pay a fine to the government for not having it. We must repeal it, and until uh, such time that the total bill can be repealed, we will not fund it time. if we have a conservative Congress. Thank you. Third question, Mr. Sowers. If elected, what would you do to support job growth in the 8th District and the rest of the country? Well, it, it is clear that that is my number one focus. And in the last 14 years, we, we've slipped. We've lost 16,000 <coughs> manufacturing jobs at 150 factories. And you don't have to travel far to see it. I worked at Cap America for a day out on the campaign, but right next to it is the Brown Shoe Factory, or what used to be the last open Brown Shoe Factory facility. Our manufacturing has been decimated, and the main culprit behind this, and I hear it from the, from the workers, is trade. Uh, the free trade bills that have been passed in the last 20 years have decimated rural uh, towns and rural manufacturing. And unfortunately, Congresswoman Emerson has supported, I believe it's 12 of 13 free trade deals. The thing is, is that it's not free. If it was free, we'd go into Walmart and everything would cost 80% off, but it costs the same. And somebody is benefiting from this, just not our, our home here. 